This is probably the easiest and fastest way to create your own MCP server using Python. All you need for this tutorial is fast MCP and just a few minutes. Once your MCP server is running, you can hook it up to any MCP client like Continue, GitHub Copilot, Cloud Desktop, and many more. So we're gonna set up a simple MCP server and I'm gonna show you how any Python function could be exposed as a tool that your AI assistant can then use. I have a function that takes a URL as a parameter and then scrapes content off and compiles a basic list of SEO items like title, description, and keywords. For this example, I'm gonna use this post from my blog. But even though our example is about SEO, the concepts and logic are the same for any other use case. You'll be able to apply what you're gonna see now into any work that you're doing. Just to keep this video straight to the point, I'm not gonna talk about the MCP protocol itself, but if you wanna know more, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to my other video going over key MCP concepts. So check it out. All right, so your server and client need a way to talk to each other and FastMCP supports all the different transport options. These are like the channels used by the client and the server to communicate with each other. First, we have the standard in, standard out transport, then the remote transports, which are the streamable HTTP, and SSE transport, which is deprecated, but it's still there for legacy support. Next, we have in-memory transport and MCP JSON configuration transport, which is used when defining multiple servers. Now, I'm not going to touch on the different transports within the protocol, but if you want to read more, I'm going to leave a link to the official documentation so you can read on the topic. Now, for this tutorial, I'm going to use the streamable HTTP transport, which is really good for production deployments and you can easily hook it up to any MCP client. Okay, so all you need to run an MCP server is this fast MCP package, but I also have requests and beautiful soup because like I said in the introduction of this video, I have a tool that will be exposed within this MCP server that is able to get some content from any given URL and it uses beautiful soup and requests to do that. So I'm including those in my requirements.txt file. Okay, so let's take a look at the project structure. So first we have this requirements.txt file and we have a Docker file because we're gonna run this in a container. So we're obviously using Python here and I'm exposing port 8000. Uh, which is going to be used for this MCP server. Then we're doing a command python app.py. Okay, we also have a docker compose file. Then we have app.py and our tools folder here, which includes one tool or one function, which is called SEO info. Now this function essentially like I said before, is going to take a URL and then use beautiful soup to grab the information and scrape the content off of this URL. And then we're going to compile some SEO data. We have a URL, a title, meta description, and keywords. And the keywords, we're just looking at the number of times a word is mentioned on the website within the content. And then this is going to populate this array here with the keywords used by order. So within your project, you might have many other functions that you want to expose as tools for your MCP server so that your AI client like GitHub Copilot or Continue or Cloud Desktop or whatever could use. So in this example, we have this regular Python function called SEO info that we're going to expose as a tool. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so all we need to do is create a new instance of fast MCP, and I'm doing that right here. So I'm saying MCP equals fast MCP, and I'm just giving it a demo name. So in this case, it's demo server. You can call it whatever you want. And as you can see, I'm also importing our SEO info Python function from this tools folder here that we just saw. Okay, so we have this demo function as well here, which is called multiply essentially it takes two numbers and multiplies them together. And we're saying that this is a tool by adding this decorator here, mcp.tool. Now there are optional things that you can add like tags and you can see more about the different tags and different options in the documentation. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can read on that. But essentially what I'm saying here, this multiply tool is deprecated so that your MCP server knows to tell the client that this multiply function is deprecated. Okay, next we can see our SEO info. So we're passing this URL and we're returning whatever this function returns, essentially the SEO information from the URL. And all we need to do, super easy, is just add this decorator. So this is how you can convert or expose any existing Python function within your project as a tool 
in your MCP server using FastMCP. It's really that easy. Okay, so next I wanna go over a resource here. So this data config. And the difference between a tool and a resource is essentially that a tool can be automatically requested by the AI model. So for example, if you're asking your AI model for SEO information on a specific URL, it's going to find that tool and ask you or prompt you to use it. And this is done automatically by the model. On the flip side, if you want the information from an MCP resource to be added to the conversation or the context of your conversation with the AI model, you need to you as the user need to manually include this resource within your chats. So for example, if you wanna add this config information to the context of your conversation, you would need to add this kit config uh, within your MCP client chat. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. So I have this continue uh, setup here and you can see this is the resource. So we have get config and we have our tools right here. So we have multiply and get SEO info. Now let's say I want to do multiplication. So I can say multiply two with two. Now my client knows that it's going to use the multiply uh, function. So it's asking me, can I use multiply tool? I'm going to accept that. And it's just going to uh, run this and show us the result. Okay, so now let's assume that I want the model or I want my conversation to include this information here. So I want to know the theme, uh, what, what theme it is, whether it's dark or light. And I can't just say, uh, what is the theme? That's not going to work because if I run that, the model has no idea what I'm talking about. So I need to include this resource manually. And this is what I meant by the model picks up a tool automatically versus a resource you need to add it. So I can say get config and now the model should know what I'm talking about. And it says the theme in the provided configuration is dark. That's essentially the difference uh, right here. All right, so now I'm gonna run my SEO test and I'm gonna say grab SEO info from this URL. And what's gonna happen uh, the client is going to send this request and then it's going to check with my MCP server whether there are any tools to get SEO info from this URL. And we obviously have one, get SEO info. So it's going to take this URL and pass it here so that our SEO function can run and then return whatever we set it up to return. So I'm going to run this. The client continue here is going to ask me whether I need to use this tool. I'm going to accept and then we should have our answer back. So let's do that says, can I use uh, SEO info? I'm going to accept it. Okay, perfect. Here's the SEO information from the URL. And we can see the title, what is MCP, meta description, content keywords. We can see uh, the keywords here. So MCP mentioned 39 times, etc. And this just shows you how really simple and easy it is to have your existing functionality connected to any AI model using MCP and fast MCP. Okay, now that's obviously a super basic MCP server, but that's fine because an MCP server is supposed to expose existing functionality within your application to AI models. So you're probably just going to expose some functions or some new functions from existing functionalities within your application so that they could be connected to an MCP client. Okay, so finally, I just want to show you how to run this and we can do mcp.run, which is the default here, but it's going to use standard in, standard out by default. And for this example, I'm using HTTP, so we can do mcp.run and then we can pass in the parameters. So we have transport, HTTP, and then I had to use this exact host because I'm running this in a Docker container. So if you don't do that, it's not, it's not going to work. And then we can specify the port, so 8000 and the path. This basically means that our MCP server is running on this host, this port, slash MCP. So after doing that, we can finally take it for a spin. I'm going to say Docker, oops, Docker Compose up. And there we go. That's everything you need to know. Your MCP server is running here. So we have HTTP, our port, slash MCP. And you can use any client to test this out. I have another video where I show you how to set up continue also going to leave a link in the description. That's a lot of links in the description. But if you want to know more on the topic, these are really easy tutorials. So make sure to check them out if you're starting your MCP journey. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.